With a song in my heart, the story of men and their music, of composers who really had a song in their heart. one of the last numbers ever written by Jerome Kern. He wrote it to a lyric by Oscar Hammerstein II, and it's with the latter gentleman's work that we devote this episode. Irving Berlin said of Oscar Hammerstein, He's the poet of songwriting. Most songwriters merely write words. Hammerstein writes lyrics that sing. And to all songwriters, the name of Oscar Hammerstein is synonymous with the apex of lyric writing. Although we've not previously given a chapter of With a Song in My Heart to Mr. Hammerstein, his name constantly recurs through previous episodes as lyric writer to Rudolf Frimmel, Sigmund Romberg, and, of course, Jerome Kern. Strangely enough, he's written only one song as a straight pop. Well, that's to say, away from situation numbers in musical comedies and talkies. Likewise, it was the only melody that Jerry Kern released as a pop. It happened like this. Hello? Is that Mr. Kern's residence? It is. Jerome Kern speaking. Thanks, Mr. E. Kern. New York calling. Go ahead, please. Hello? Is that you, Jerry? It is? Who's calling? Oscar Hammerstein. My Oscar, it's good to hear your voice again. And that goes both ways, Jerry. Say, I've got an idea for you. Another new show? No, not this time. Merely an idea for a song. One song. Now, Oscar, don't tell me you've written a straight pop. Well, that's the way it is, Jerry. Listen, I'll give you the lyric completely. Go right ahead. And when Kern heard those lyrics, he was so enthralled by them that he jotted them down and wrote the manuscript whilst he talked with Hammerstein in New York from his home in Hollywood. You probably know that the number proved to be that smash hit, The Last Time I Saw Paris. I'm 
same old taxi cabs that I had dodged for years. The chorus of the squeaky horns was music to my ears. The last time I saw Paris, her heart was young and gay, no matter how they change her, I'll remember her that In top songwriting circles, that song was regarded as a little classic. Incidentally, during a world tour by Noel Coward, it was the only song outside his own composition sung by him. Now, about this man Hammerstein, what's he like? He is regarded in the United States as the gentleman of Broadway. Over six feet high and weighing around 225 pounds, he is the direct opposite of what you would think he would look like. In fact, someone described him as looking like a prize fighter, and that isn't exaggerated. But when he smiles and talks, he is as gentle as a lamb. Which is one of the reasons that he's revered by the whole theatrical profession. As the librettist and lyric writer of productions like Rosemary, Sunny, Showboat, New Moon, and dozens of other successes of the past, he set a standard that's never been approached in the entire history of show business. As the writer today of even bigger successes, such as Oklahoma, Carousel, South Pacific and The King and I, he's still a way out in front from his contemporaries. So, we'll deal with his successes over the more recent years. Somewhere around 1943, he took a script down to the Theatre Guild in New York. They liked it. So much so, that their producer contacted composer Richard Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yes, Rogers speaking. Teresa Helburn of the Theatre Guild calling. I understand that since dissolving partnership with Lorenz Hart, that you're looking for a new script. That's more or less correct, but it's got to be a mighty good one. Well, I think it is. Who's it by? Oscar Hammerstein. Now, I'm really interested. Go ahead. It's a musical based on the book Green Grow the Lilac. That's mighty strange. I only read that book recently, and the thought crossed my mind... What a fine musical comedy it'd make. In that case, I think that you and Mr. Hammerstein should get together on it. Maybe you can make something of it. And believe me, they surely did. When the show was announced for a tryout out of town, the skeptics were loud in their denunciation of it. I see Dick Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein are doing a show. Yeah, so I heard. And from what I can see of it, it's on the way to being the big flop of showbiz. Well, that's how I feel about it. Why, Hammerstein hasn't written a success since Music in the Air. That's ten years back. Yeah, I reckon he wrote himself out years ago. Another thing. Dick Rogers won't find it so easy to turn out a hit either. Now that he's split with Larry Hart... You're telling me. Besides, there's not a real name with any box office appeal in the entire cast. 
Alfred Drake, Celeste Holm. Never heard of him. Nor I. My tip is that this will be the first and the last collaboration of Rogers and Hammerstein. Yes, sir. By the way, what are they calling the show? Oklahoma. And were Broadway's wise guys' faces red when that production hit New York? And when they heard melodies like these. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Oh, what a beautiful day. The success of Oklahoma proved to be the beginning of one of the most spectacular collaborations in theatrical history. The show was to become an American tradition, and it repeated its success throughout the world of theaterdom. Naturally, Hollywood decided to cash in on the new partnership and signed Rogers and Hammerstein up for a talkie. It proved to be the charming and ingenuous State Fair, and from that production came such hits as It Might As Well Be Spring. And it's a grand night for singing, plus many others. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I am starry-eyed and vaguely discontented. 
Like a nightingale without a song to sing Oh, why should I have spring fever When it isn't even spring I keep wishing I were somewhere else Walking down a strange new street Hearing words that I have never heard From a girl I've yet to meet I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud Or a robin on the wing But I feel so gay in a melancholy way That it might as well be spring It might as well First number, It Might As Well Be Spring, got the Academy Award, together with the coveted Oscar, as the best song of its year. Other musicals were to follow from Rogers and Hammerstein, three in a row, and all hits, Allegro, Carousel, and South Pacific. Both were men of wealth before they ever came together. What they've added to their fortune since their collaboration runs into millions, and I mean millions. Furthermore, they went into theatrical management on their own and produced such hits as John Loves Mary and Annie Get Your Gun. They bought the latter show with Jerome Kern in mind to write the music. But, as Mr. Hammerstein says... The sudden death of Jerry Kern in New York temporarily threw our plans awry for the production of Annie. I took the matter up with Dick Roger. Well, Oscar, what's to be done about Annie? Do you think we ought to write it? No, Dick, it's not for us. With Oklahoma proving such a smash, I don't think we should attempt it. It's a show that needs simple, homely melodies wedded to lyrics of the same kind. Just about the hardest type of numbers to write. Agreed, but I've got one man in mind. So have I, if you take it on. Meaning? Why, Berlin, of course. Irving what? Berlin. Why, that's who I was thinking of, too. Let's approach him. And approach him they did. 
and the success of Annie brought them in another million dollars or so. Yes, just like that. Unfortunately, copyright difficulties preclude us from playing some of their later successes. But we should worry. We'll get by by having another number from their score of State Fair. The song, That's For Me. I saw you standing in the sun And you were something to see I know what I like and I liked what I saw And I said to myself That's for me A lovely morning, I remarked And you were quick to agree you wanted to walk, and I nodded my head as I breathlessly said, That's for me. I left you standing under stars, the days adventures are through. There's nothing for me but the dream in my heart, and the dream in my heart, That's for you. Oh, my darling, that's for you. I left you standing on the stars of the day's adventures are through. There's nothing for me but the dream in my heart and the dream in my heart. The quiet existence led by Oscar Hammerstein is one of the wonders of Broadway. He's happily married to an Australian beauty from Melbourne, Dorothy Blanchard, and, as soon as he can, steals away from Broadway at every opportunity to his farm. Incidentally, he does most of his writing there, developing his plots and ideas far from the bustle and scurry of Times Square. Mr. Hammerstein, though a millionaire many times over, is one of the most modest of men and a perfect model for all aspiring playwrights to emulate. His work for the theatre has been prodigious, and if his reward has been great, it can be said that it's been well and truly earned. So, farewell Oscar Hammerstein, the poet of Broadway, and thanks for the many happy hours your creations have given us. And for our finale, Oscar Hammerstein's and Jerome Kern's lovely number from Music in the Air. And love was born. A warm spring night was stirred by a breeze, and love was born. A moon in flight was caught in the trees, and love was born. A lark sang out, and through the mist. There came a sigh upon the sigh, and two young lips were gently kissed, and the two young hearts learned to fly. A shepherd boy awoke from a doze and blew his horn. The sun came up and smiled on our rose and love was born.
and through the mist there came a sigh upon a sigh. And two young lips were gently kissed, and two young hearts learned to fly. A shepherd boy awoke from a doze and blow his horn. So we close another chapter in our series of men with a song in their hearts. The artists depicting the events of the Hammerstein story were Mary Thomas, Gordon Glenwright, Keith Hudson, Richard Gaze, Kathleen Goodall, Max Blake, Eula Parker and her Parkettes, and Horry Dargis Quartet. Your compere was John Morgan. Orchestra and chorus under the baton of William Flynn. With a song in my heart was produced by Alfred Potter and scripted and directed by Jack O'Hagan.